Okay, so this is the process that I use for um, spot mapping in Wildbook. So here's an example of one of the encounters that you guys have uploaded. Um, and the place where I start is here in the gallery where you pick a suitable picture like this one. And you click the menu box in the bottom right hand side and go down to the option spot mapping. That's going to bring up this window. And then you've got a couple of things you've got to do before you start um, mapping spots. You have to get this box of interest into the right place. And into the right place means you need to see the animal's back here, uh, but it needs to be approximately horizontal, so you can rotate the box until it's pretty close to horizontal. Um, you need to be able to see the top of the fifth gill, the bottom of the fifth gill, and the place where the pectoral fin meets the body. Those are the three landmarks. You can see them listed over here on the left. So now in our area of interest box, we've got straight back, top of fifth, bottom of fifth, posterior pec, okay? And you click those in the order they're listed here. So fifth gill top, I'm gonna to click that. Posterior pectoral, click there. And fifth gill bottom, click there. We've now defined the landmarks that the computer's gonna to use to relate the positions of all the spots. And immediately it goes into the spot mode and you can start to mark the spots that you see on the animal. And there is a perennial argument about what constitutes a spot. Um, the truth is, if you think it's a spot, it's probably a spot. But there are times, like over here, where it's going to get confusing because there's some sun dappling there. Direct sun dappling on an animal is actually not the, not the ideal situation. Um, and here I am marking all the spots that I can see, and I think there's one under the dapple there. Um, the key thing is, don't mark anything posterior to that point. So these ones over here don't count. And you can't mark anything above the first ridge along the side of the body. So these ones up here don't count. Uh, you can't mark anything in front of this line with the, the fifth gill. So none of these spots over here. And you can't mark anything below this line. So these ones out on the pectoral fin don't, have, don't count here. Um, that one might count there, right there. Um, so once we've got them uh, clicked into like that, actually that one might be there too. Um, we can go ahead and save those spot data, and that's exactly what's happening here. And once it's successfully saved that, you can see this button here that says Start Scan Task. And so that's what we're going to do. Start Scan Task, and it's going to add that to the, what they call the Shark Grid, which is the computer queue for those um, running those analyses. So we can either go back to the encounter, or we can go over to the Shark Grid and have a look and see how we're doing um, on those comparisons. So we click there and it takes us to the shark grid. You'll see this screen, grid administration. And here you can see my pending scan tasks and it's got that encounter that we just spot mapped and so far it's compared it to 1,680 others. It's got 39,500 to do so it's going to take a while. And so you can sit here and um, furiously pound the reload button um, or you can take a break and go and get a cold beer and come back and that's what I'm going to do about 10 minutes have elapsed and you can see that our task has moved from the my pending tasks to the my completed scan tasks there's actually a step in between where it says you can write the results but if you just wait 30 seconds it'll automatically move it down to the my completed scan tasks and at that point you can click the button that says view and it's going to take you to it should okay here we go it's going to take you to the comparison page. So uh, this is where the really the rubber meets the road because we're going to start doing some actual comparisons here. So the way this works is you've got two tabs here, one for modified growth algorithm and one for I3S, sometimes called IRIS. Um, if you look on the left, uh, that's your encounter that you just uploaded. The one on the right is the top closest match and you can see the list of matches down here. And you get some good hints. Um, it says confidence low, 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 low. So there are no high matches to start with. So it looks like this might be a new animal. But before we can say that, we have to check them out for sure. Um, so right now it's only showing matches for the locations that are similar. So it's basically the, the Atlantic. Um, and I don't want that. I want to see all the matches in case it's an animal that came from somewhere else and happened to show up in St. Helena. So I'll click show all matches. And now you can see that that list just got substantially bigger. Do you have to do all of these comparisons? No, 
I don't think so. Um, you could do all the way down the list, but my guess is after about the, the top 30, um, you're probably not going to find it. So um, we start with the top one, A965, an Australian animal, and here we see it. Okay, and so this is the bit where I say, come for the spots, stay for the lines, all right? So when we do the spot pattern matching, we're marking the spots, but what tends to make the visual match is the lines that you see when you look at the animal. So here's a couple of straight lines, here's a little curved swoop, here's another line here. Those lines tell you very quickly whether you're looking at the same animal or not. And so you can visually, at this point you are visually comparing to see how the computer did relative to eye. Um, and you can see that the relative spots are marked. So this purple spot here highlights the same purple spot on the other one, this one over here. Um, and so it, if it's not showing all of the spots, the chances are it's not a great match. Um, to make a good match, it's going to want to highlight every single spot that you marked and find a corresponding spot over here. If it's choosing subsets of spots to make a match, chances are it's not one. So we can go next to the next animal. Again, these lines not present on our animal. Our animal really has no distinct lines at all. Um, so if we see lines, we know we're not looking at the correct animal. So you can you get very quick at this. That's a terrible picture, by by the way. Stuff like this should be really be removed from the database, but it hasn't been. Um, that, that's really no good at all. Um, okay, so here's one that doesn't have so many lines, but there's still lines here, and we, we know we don't have those. And there's all these extraneous spots that didn't match. So we can keep buzzing through those, and so on and so on. And eventually you're going to find that you get through the top uh, 30 or 40 animals without finding a match. So at that point you're thinking, okay, we're looking good for this to be um, a new animal. But hold your horses, not quite so fast, because um, you're going to want to go up to I3S uh, and click that tab, and it's going to bring up a whole other set of matches, and here they are. Um, and so you're going to need to go through those as well at least the top 30 or 40 to make sure that you don't have a match by I3S. So you go through that process. I'm probably going to pause the computer, uh, pause the video and go through that process so that I can show you what happens when you decide you want to make it a new one because it looks like this one probably is. So let's pause the growth uh, top 30 or top 40 and the same for I3S and couldn't find anything that was close to this animal. So that means, chances are, new animal. So how do we do that? You come over here back to the encounter page and it's really over here at the identity page. So you see identity, you click the button that says edit um, and then it's gonna automatically say by pattern match and you can set that. Set by pattern match, check mark appears. And then we can go down and say set new individual ID. And it will say the next animal in the sequence should be SHA-295. So we can click that and it automatically populates SHA-295 into the box and we can click it and say it's new. Okay, that's done. And it will automatically populate the next box to say this is an unmatched first encounter, All right? If you want to give it an alternate name, you can do that down here. So you might want to say this one's called Knix um, or whatever you might want to do, it's up to you. Um, Oops. Uh, and then you can see that that has now been added to SHA-295 when I hit set. Um, and we can close that and you'll now see that this animal is identified as SHA-295. Okay. Now, having done that left side uh, spot pattern, you want to go through the whole same process with the right side. Um, we cannot create new animals on the basis of a right side image. You can only create new animals on the basis of a left side image. But given that you have both sides of this animal, it's prudent to go ahead and mark the right side spots. Because out there in the database may be an orphan whale shark encounter that only has a right side photo that happens to match this one. And you won't know that unless you go ahead and match this animal's right side spots. So. You go through the exact same process from the left side with the right side. You'll see you click the button here, down to spot mapping, all that stuff, um, and, and run the right side analysis just the same as you did for the left side analysis. Now, in the beginning, you'll probably do these one encounter at a time from beginning to end, but in the end, you'll get quite good at um, batching up a whole bunch of these things, putting them all on the shark grid, and then going to bed and coming back tomorrow and seeing that you've got a list of completed scan tasks 
and then you've got a joyous day ahead of, of going cross-eyed looking at uh, match after match in growth and i3s for new matches. Um, I strongly suggest you do not get lazy and start looking at the top five or the top ten. It, truthfully, you really do need to look at 30 or 40 top animals before uh, you can be sure that you've got an animal. Um, the algorithm's good, but it's not perfect, um, especially if the, if the photo is less than ideal. Um, so I strongly suggest that you go through at least 30 or 40 animals from each of the two um, algorithms before you d determine that something is a new animal. Now, if you, if you happen to muff it and, and mark an animal new and it already exists in the database, that happens from time to time, and it's easily corrected. And that number will be recycled and made available for the next new encounter animal that is, is brought up in the database. But that's the basic process, um, and um, if you have any trouble, do please let me know. Um, uh, and um, if I can help, I certainly will. So good luck, and let me know how you get along. All right, bye.